In this video, I will share with you my top photography tips for content creators. If you already watched this video, then you'd know that I am a self-taught professional headshot photographer and coincidentally a content creator. Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're a content creator, an entrepreneur, or a working mama, then you've come to the right place. Creating visual content doesn't have to be scary. Trust me when I say that every single one of us is absolutely capable of taking a compelling and engaging image. And I promise you, it all comes down to practice. I previously created a video on how you can source visual content for social media. Make sure you check it out. I'm gonna link it in the description below. And in this video, I want to focus on how you can take your own good quality images using what you already have. If you're new to my channel, my name is Veronica. I'm a co-founder of a modest active wear brand for generation apparel, a content creator and photographer. I share my business journey along with its ups and downs, valuable lessons and practical advice to inspire women like me to pursue their passion, take action and start working for their dreams. Without further ado, Let's dive right into this video. First of all, let's talk about your equipment. What are you going to use to take your photos with? I personally use either my camera or my phone, and it all depends on the situation and the type of content I'm creating. If you're a business owner already or you want to be one, I promise you that investing in the camera and getting the basics of photography down will definitely help you and your business. I truly believe that every single business owner and entrepreneur, online entrepreneur, needs to have a camera and know a little bit of photography, of course, when you can afford it. Until then, using your phone is perfectly fine. Let me give you a couple of examples. I use my camera when I do a brand shoot for my website or promotional material for my podcast. That's when I really want the photos to be really high quality and look very professional. And because I already have a camera, I like to use it. But for everything else, for creating content for TikTok, um, creating images for Instagram, I use my phone. I have an iPhone 11 and I invested it as a part of my business just because I am a content creator and I constantly work on my phone and I need to take good quality images. So this was a no-brainer investment for me. If you are watching this video on your phone or you stumble upon this video on Instagram, then you already have a smartphone that has a camera that is capable of taking photos and that's all you need. I will share with you some tips when it comes to lighting and angles that will help you elevate your photos that you take with your smartphone, no matter what kind of smartphone it is. As for my camera, I have a Canon ATD that I bought almost five years ago. It works perfectly fine. It served me as a professional hedge photographer. It served me on my YouTube journey. It serves me every single day when I take photos for my modest activewear brand for generation apparel. It's been such a good companion <laughs> on my creative journey. If you are seriously planning on building a solid uh, personal brand or a business and you want to reduce your overheads and increase your cash flow, I really think you should be thinking about investing in a camera if you don't already have one, learning photography, and I honestly taught myself how <laughs> to use my camera and how to shoot raw and how to edit. All of those tutorials are available online, so trust me, the information is there for you to learn. As for the equipment, you need to have either a camera or a phone. If you have a phone, that's all you need. If you want to elevate your game, invest in a camera. But honestly, when it comes to creating content for my personal brand, um, I use my phone 80% of the time and my camera 20% of the time. You got to do what works for you. Another piece of equipment that I would definitely recommend getting is a tripod. I got my tripod a few years back for 20 bucks, I got it second hand of Trade Me, which is like New Zealand version of eBay. It works great. I'm using it right now. It's a great investment. It's very lightweight. I can take it 
anywhere with me. I can mount my phone or my camera on it. And the good thing is I don't have to bother anybody in my family if I want to get my photos taken. I would also recommend investing in a phone holder. I love this one. I've also bought it a couple of years ago and I've been using it all the time ever since. It has the kind of long side where you can put your phone vertically or you can even put your iPad and it has a shorter side where you can put your phone horizontally. It has this mechanism here which means that you can put this bad boy on every single tripod. It's universal. It also cost me 20 bucks brand new. I also got it off Trade Me and I've been using it ever since. It's very sturdy, nothing happens to it. Having a lightweight tripod and a phone holder and your phone means that you can place it anywhere in your house. You can place it where the lighting is perfect or you can actually take it with you and take photos outdoors. And let's talk about that right now. We have to batch our images. Over the years I've developed a strategy that works for me, so hear me out. I do content shoots maybe every a few months. You might think it's not often enough, but trust me, it's enough. When I know that I need to get out there and plan out my shoot, I make sure I choose a location that offers a diverse landscape. It's all very close together, but it seems that it's in different parts of the town. So the spots here that you want to capture your images in are very close to one another, but they're all very different and very diverse. I pack multiple outfits. So I'm in the same location, but I can wear multiple outfits. I can always get changed in public bathrooms. That's what I've been doing. And also things like scarves and jackets they really can transform your outfit. Make sure you pack a little backpack or a suitcase, depends on how much you want to capture that day, when you head out for your shoot with different outfits, get to work. And when you're there, make sure you capture a wide variety of shots. Some are full length, mid shots, close ups, over the shoulders, shots of different details, pack a bunch of props like journals, pins, a cute takeaway mug, a book that you want to share a review of, plan ahead. You can even write a short list down to make sure you get all of those options while you're there. And I promise you, if you're strategic and prepared, you can walk away with 20 to 30 to 40 images that you can use on your social media and they will look engaging and interesting and very much like you. I've also learned to combine work and pleasure together. I, I'm always on the lookout for cool places, cool angles. And if I'm out and about on a walk, for example, and I look presentable and I stumble upon a cute spot, I'll make sure to take a picture there. If you feel like you look good and you find a cool spot and there's no one there to take your photo, you don't, don't have your tripod, trust me, a good selfie will also do. Don't be afraid to pack up your tripod and your phone holder with you. Don't be afraid to use it in public. Strangers that will come across you doing your thing, the likelihood of them seeing you again is minimal. Who cares? They don't know you, they don't know what you're doing, but you do. You do, and you know that you need to show up on social media and you need to show up the best way that you can and you just have to get over it. Trust me, once you do it once or twice, and when you truly focus on your why and why you need to show up and when you need to do the thing that you need to do, funny looks, they kind of become irrelevant. Don't be afraid to show up even if you need to take photos in public using your tripod and a self-timer. It will be worth it. Let's talk a little bit about lighting. And when I say lighting is everything, I mean it. Soft, natural kind of lighting is something you should be aiming for. If you're filming indoors, make sure you find a window or a doorway and you face that source of light when you're snapping your photo. If you are outdoors, make sure you shoot in the shade and try to avoid shooting in harsh daylight as much as possible. So the best times to shoot would be in the morning before the sun is really high up 
or in the afternoon you can also get some awesome sunset shots if the weather is really good. If you're shooting at midday for example and the sun is really high up and there are no clouds in the sky you will get really harsh shadows underneath your eyes, your nose, your chin and it just doesn't look flattering and you will probably hate those pictures. If you don't have any other time to shoot then make sure you find a tree shoot in the shade when the lighting is as even as it can be on your face if you're shooting indoors and you really want the freedom when it comes to composing your photos i strongly recommend investing in artificial lighting and once again it doesn't have to be expensive you can purchase a ring light and i purchased my ring light of aliexpress and it was about 60 new zealand dollars which is a lot cheaper and it does the job i'm a self-proclaimed queen of resourcefulness so i went to aliexpress to minimize that cost and i've been using this ring light for almost a year now it works great i'm using it right now and i love it with having artificial source of lighting you can create that perfect natural looking soft light anywhere in the house you don't have to be facing the window or taking the photos in the same doorway again and again and again you can get more creative and try different things with the lighting trust me good lighting really elevates the quality of your image. If you have a well lit image, you can take it on a brick of a phone, it'll still look amazing. Let's talk about posing. Posing can be very awkward, especially if you're not used to it, especially if you're trying to take a photo in public using your tripod on your phone holder and a self timer and you're just trying to look natural. That sounds stressful and I've been taking social media images for a while now. Start posing at home when you're by yourself on self timer to get your poses down. Like it all comes down to practice. I promise you, you will get more comfortable with it the more you do it. To get you started, let's get you home alone with your gear and just the right attitude. And no matter how many pictures you end up with, you can take hundreds of horrible pictures. There will be one that you can post that night. So it'll all be worth it. And I promise you, it'll get easier as you carry on and keep doing it. To this day, it's a lot easier for me to pose with a tripod. Sometimes when I need to get the photos done using my camera, I would ask my husband or my mom to take the photos for me just because it's um, a lot harder with the camera. It's okay, I just got over the cringe and they all just roll with it and it's great. So when it comes to posing, rather than just striking a pose, try moving around. That way you won't look stiff. You can even go to the video mode on your phone, make sure the lighting is good and do some moving around in the process. You know, while you're moving around, look to the distance, strike a smile at your camera, look the other way, do a twirl, put your hands in your pocket, I don't know, hold your hijab, <laughs> just try different things. And while you're recording it on the highest quality setting possible, then you can go through that video. You can actually take little screenshots within that video that would be totally Instagram worthy. And most importantly, they will look natural. This method might reduce the quality of your image, but it will help you to nail down the poses that were great for you and the more you do it you can just go to those poses your signature poses that work amazingly well for you and just keep reusing them and keep striking the same pose in different locations and different outfits there you go now let's talk about product photos let's just say you have an e-commerce brand or you don't always want to be the subject of your own photos first of all you have to get creative and you have to go to a craft store and pick up a few supplies and look at them this as an investment it's not a waste of money it's something that you will be using and reusing time and time again places like Kmart sell a lot of cute journals and stationery and mugs that have really cute messages you can also hit op shops and you can find a lot of amazing gems there seriously op shops are gold mines you can slowly build up your 
prop library, <laughs> clear out a little cupboard in your home where you can store all of that stuff there. You have your props, now you need to think about the background, where you want to be taking those pictures. You can take yourself to a dollar store and pick up some colored paper, marble and wood looking paper, any sort of surface you wanted really. So you can buy a bunch of them and you can use them as background for your props. Also pay attention to the surfaces within your home. You can have a really cool looking kitchen bench or you can have a very cool hardwood floor or even if you go outdoors and you have an awesome deck. You just need to keep your eyes peeled for the surfaces around you that you can turn into a beautiful composition for your photo. And once again, embrace the role of the artist. Trust me, we all are capable of creating a beautiful image. Just give yourself some freedom to experiment. Some of your shots will look bad, but some of them will look amazing. And once again, you will get better with practice. So get to trying. You can also create a little light box setup. Since I have a modest activewear brand, a lot of our shoes include fitness. I have a bunch of dumbbells, resistant bands, ankle weights, weight bags, gym bags, skipping ropes. Honestly, I can go on and on. The beauty of it is it's fitness equipment that I can use for my home workout so it's a win-win investing in those props was a no-brainer for me I've also invested in big paper backdrops for my business and for my personal brand and for my photography business and they paid themselves off very very quickly think about the things that are in line with your brand or with your business and get the props for your images if you grow your business if you grow your personal brand that investment will Will definitely pay off. Okay, let's move on to the next point. And this one is all about your mindset. I want you to start thinking like a storyteller. And it all comes down to really knowing who you are and what you are about as a content creator or an entrepreneur. Think like a storyteller. Be the Steven Spielberg of your life. Every single month, my husband and I go over our goals, our monthly goals, our timelines, make changes to our plans if we need to. While we were in the process of that, I was there in the moment doing what I usually do and I thought to myself this would be great I can talk about goal setting and importance of having a vision recorded and visible to you um, why don't I take a picture of me doing it in the process and that way the picture will help me to tell the story we often go op shopping and I go straight to the business book section to see if there are any one dollar gems that I can learn from while I was there shopping secondhand books I took a picture and I used that picture to tell a story about how important it is to be resourceful in your business the picture matches the story so whenever you are attending a new event getting a new book networking meeting a person who inspires you take a picture and tell that story and last but certainly not least I want you to think ahead you want to take part in social conversations. So if you know that uh, National Coffee Lovers Day is coming up, you need to know when that is so you can plan to take a picture with your favorite cup of coffee and create a post all around National Coffee Lovers Day that can prompt you to share your love for chocolate or celebrate World Hijab Day like it is for me. It's one of those dates that I put in my calendar. It could be your cat's birthday and you know that <laughs> in advance. So all you need is a picture with your furry friend. So you just need to really put those dates in your calendar and that will really help you plan ahead for your content and make you feel a little bit organized and on top of your game. If you really found value in this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share this video, help me spread the word to inspire more content creators and entrepreneurs to pursue their passion, take action and start working for their dreams. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel right here. If you want to learn more about content creation, check out this playlist over here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.